Welcome to the Solar Eclipse video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. My name is Drew Chavon and I'm an extension specialist with the University of Maryland. In previous videos we explored how and why we might wire solar panels together in either a series or parallel configuration and you can review those previous videos for more information. But in today's video we'll see how and why we might wire solar panels or different solar panels together using a combination of series or parallel connections. But before we dive into some of the intricacies of different solar panel connections, we'll start by reviewing some of the basics of the series and parallel connections that we touched on previously, and how these different configurations will affect the voltage and the current of your electric system. For starters, you might recall that solar panels connected in a series configuration will have their voltages added up while their electrical current will remain the same. In this example, we have four 100 watt solar panels wired in series with the positive from each panel connected to the negative of its neighboring panel. And if you recall from a previous video, this is accomplished by pairing the connectors coming from the back of each solar panel. The remaining positive and negative lines coming from opposing ends of the solar array will run downstream to the next component of your electrical system, such as a charge controller. Since the voltage adds up within a series configuration, we'll simply add 20 volts for the first panel, plus 20 volts for the second, plus 20 volts for the third, plus 20 volts for the last panel, to get a total array voltage of 80 volts. The electrical current, however, remains unchanged at 5 amps. So, multiplying the array voltage of 80 volts by 5 amps, we see that this series configuration can deliver 400 watts of power to a charge controller under ideal conditions. And this is exactly what is expected since the total system capacity in this case is simply four panels times 100 watts per panel for a total of 400 watts. Hence, this series configuration provides an array efficiency of 100%. Now we'll revisit how the current or amperage adds up across the solar panels that are wired in parallel while the voltage remains the same. In this case, we'll consider the same four 100 watt solar panels wired in parallel with all the positive wires connected to each other and all the negative wires connected to each other. And if you recall from a previous video, we could make these connections using a combiner box that has breakers or fuses, or we could use special couplers as long as the couplers are rated to handle the electrical current that's flowing through the system. But in any sense, the remaining positive and negative lines will once again run downstream to the next component of the electrical system. Now since the electrical current adds up within a parallel configuration, we'll simply add 5 amps plus 5 amps plus 5 amps plus 5 amps once more for a total of 20 amps. The voltage of the system, however, remains unchanged at 20 volts. So multiplying the array voltage of 20 volts by 20 amps, we see that this parallel configuration will once again deliver 400 watts of power to the charge controller under ideal conditions. And since the total system capacity is 400 watts, this parallel configuration also provides an array efficiency of 100%. Now we'll consider a unique configuration that's comprised of series and parallel connections. Using the same four 100 watt solar panels, we'll pair them into two separate series and then connect the resulting strings in parallel. Once again, the remaining positive and negative lines will run downstream. So in this case, we would add 20 volts plus 20 volts to equal 40 volts for each series configuration. Both of the series configurations would remain at 5 amps. Next, we add the electrical current for each parallel component together. So for the parallel aspect of the system, we would add 5 amps plus 5 amps for a total of 10 amps. The voltage of the system will remain unchanged from the individual series components at a value of 40 volts. So multiplying the array voltage of 40 volts by 10 amps, we see that this combined configuration will once again deliver 400 watts of power to a charge controller under ideal conditions. And since the total system capacity is 400 watts, this combined configuration provides an array efficiency of 100%. Now let's consider another example where we might want to add an additional solar panel to an existing solar array. In this case, we'll consider the same existing array having two strings of solar panels with each being composed of the two 100 watt solar panels connected in series. Based on principles that we've just discussed, each string will operate at 40 volts while the current will remain at 5 amps. 
and these two strings have been connected in parallel with one another for a total output now of 400 watts, which can once again be verified by multiplying the system voltage of 40 volts by the combined 10 amps. Now, if we were to wire one additional solar panel in parallel with these two strings, the total current would then increase to 15 amps, but the voltage would be limited to the lowest common voltage of the system, which was 20 volts coming from that newly added solar panel. This means that the entire array would now operate at 20 volts and 15 amps, resulting in a power output of only 300 watts. But since the total system capacity is 400 watts, this combined configuration now only provides an array efficiency of 75%, which means that we're losing a quarter of the installed capacity. And that's why the layout of the array is so important in terms of the system design. So with that simple review out of the way, we'll now consider the impact of wiring or connecting different sizes of solar panels together into the same array. While a separate charge controller could be used for each different size solar panel within your system, we'll consider wiring all the solar panels together in this example with the whole array sharing a single output. Now, when wiring different sizes of solar panels in series, the panels should all have the same electrical current or amperage rating. And that's because the whole string of solar panels connected in series will be limited by whichever panel has the lowest amperage rating. In this example, we'll use two of the same 100 watt solar panels and an additional two of these 50 watt solar panels. In this case, the 100 watt solar panels operate at 20 volts and five amps, while the 50 watt panels operate at 15 volts and only 3.3 amps. If we wired all these solar panels in series, then the voltages would all be added with 20 volts plus 20 volts, plus 15 volts plus 15 volts to get a total output of 70 volts. But since we have different current or amp ratings for each panel, the system will be limited by the lowest common denominator, which is 3.3 amps. So multiplying the array voltage of 70 volts by 3.3 amps, the output of this combined configuration is now 233 watts under ideal conditions. And since the total system capacity is 300 watts, this combined configuration only provides an array efficiency of 77%. That means that we're losing some of the installed capacity and that's why it's recommended to use the same amp ratings whenever you're connecting in series. Now, when wiring different sizes of solar panels in parallel, the panels should all have the same voltage. And that's because the whole string of solar panels that are connected in parallel will go down to the lowest voltage within the system. Wiring the same 100 watt and 50 watt solar panels in parallel would increase the electrical current of the system with an amp rating of 5 amps plus 5 amps plus 3.3 amps plus 3.3 amps for a total amp rating of 16.6 amps. But since we have a different voltage for each panel, the system will be limited by the lowest common denominator, which is 15 volts. So multiplying the array voltage of 15 volts by 16.6 amps, the output of this combined configuration is 250 watts under ideal conditions. And since the total system capacity is still 300 watts in this case, this combined configuration only provides an array efficiency of about 83%. This means that we're losing some of the installed capacity. And that's why it's recommended to use the same voltage level whenever you're connected in parallel. And so by matching the amp ratings for any series connections and the voltage levels for any parallel connections, you can effectively connect different sized panels without experiencing any undue power loss. So now that we've explored some of the simple guidelines for connecting different sized solar panels together, we'll now consider some practical examples in which we might use a combination of series and parallel connections. In this example, We'll work with some 100 watt and some 50 watt solar panels, each having a voltage of about 20 volts. The 100 watt panels, however, have a rating of five amps, while let's say the 50 watt panels have a rating of only two and a half amps. So following our general guidelines, we'll connect the 100 watt panels in series with one another since they have the same amp rating. The voltage of this series connection sums to 40 volts while the amperage remains at five amps. We'll also connect the 50 watt panels in series with one another since they have the same amp rating as each other. The voltage of this series connection also sums to 40 volts, but the amperage remains at only two and a half amps. Now we'll wire these two strings in parallel with one another since the voltage of each string is 40 volts. In this case, the electrical current becomes five amps plus two and a half amps for a total of seven and a half amps 
while the voltage of the whole configuration remains at 40 volts. So multiplying the array voltage of 40 volts by 7.5 amps, the output of this combined configuration is 300 watts under ideal conditions. And since the total system capacity is 300 watts, this combined configuration provides 100% array efficiency. Now let's say we added another 100 watt solar panel to this configuration. In this case, we'll connect all three of the 100 watt solar panels in series since they have the same amp rating. So this series within the system will operate at 60 volts and 5 amps. We'll also connect both of the 50 watt solar panels in series as we did previously. So this series within the system will operate at 40 volts and 2.5 amps. Then we'll wire the two strings in parallel as we did previously. In this case, the electrical current is 5 amps plus 2.5 amps for a total of 7.5 amps, while the voltage of the whole configuration remains at 40 volts. So multiplying the array voltage of 40 volts by 7.5 amps, we get an output of the combined configuration as 300 watts under ideal conditions. But in this case, since we installed a total system capacity of 400 watts, this combined configuration is only providing 75% array efficiency, which means that we're losing some of the installed capacity. Hence, one or more of these solar panels becomes unnecessary in this case. But again, that's why the layout of the solar array is so important in terms of system design. Well, I hope this video has provided you with an understanding of how and why you might wire different size solar panels together in either a series or parallel configuration or even how to wire them together with a combination of series and parallel connections. In upcoming videos, we'll consider other aspects of the solar electric system, including topics like battery integration. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of this Solar Clips video series. But in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar, photovoltaics, and other energy-related topics.